For this video lesson we're going to be looking at what are known as double angle formulas. In a previous lesson we were investigating um, and deriving some of the compound angle formulas and you can see an example here in the box. This is one of the results that we obtained in a previous lesson. Now one of the things I want to warn you about right away is that you may see this represented in various ways meaning the variables in the brackets here may be represented in a number of ways. So for example sine of a plus b where I'm using capital letters there that could also have been written as sine of a plus b with lowercase letters sometimes you see it as something like the sine of theta plus alpha or the sine of alpha plus beta is quite common um, another one might be the sine of x plus y it doesn't matter these are just variables they're just placeholders and the important thing is the is the pattern and of course how we're going to make use of that pattern. Now in this case we're really going to use the general case of the compound angle formula to look at a very specific case which is the double angle formula the idea that I have the sine of 2 theta and the first step in, in deriving an expression for that is to recognize that I can also write the multiplication the double of the of the angle can also just be written as a sum and if I use that now with the compound angle formula that we derived previously, the sine of a plus b is sine a cos b, so sine of theta plus theta is sine theta cos theta. Plus, and this was going to be cos theta sine theta. But of course, these two are actually the same terms, it's just that they are written in a different order, but because it's multiplication, we know that multiplication is commutative, which means I can, it's just the same way I can say that 2 times 3 is the same as 3 times 2. I can reverse the order of that multiplication. So really I have two of the same thing here, so we write it as two of that same thing, and traditionally we write it in the order sine cos. So this is 2 times sine of theta times the cos of theta. And something to keep in mind is just to reinforce the idea that that's a multiplication of each of those. Okay? So I know that to most people, if you're watching this video, that's obvious to you, but that's the kind of thing that can slip one's mind, particularly if you're maybe stressed in the moment of writing a test or something like that. So we end up with sine 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cos theta and that's the first of our double angle formulas. So if you recall our derivation of the compound angle formulas they're actually a little bit more involved in this but now we can leverage that and we end up with actually a very simple derivation here. Another one that I'm going to show you I don't think you need to get each of these down in your notes but you do need the previous one so you have an example of how we're doing this we're going to make use of the compound angle formula for adding two angles with cosine, so cosine of a plus b, and we're going to use that to come up with the double angle formula for cosine. And so, seems simple enough, we're going to start the exact same way as we did before, so this becomes cos a cos b is just cos theta cos theta, minus sine theta sine theta, but I could write that more simply as cosine theta times cosine theta is cosine theta all squared. Sine theta times sine theta is sine theta all squared. And I'm sure many of you are already familiar with these conventions that we use when we have powers of the trigonometric functions. So we call this one cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And that is one of my double angle identities for cosine. So but now I say that's one of and the reason is because we can also make use of the Pythagorean identity. So sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to 1 and that means I can rearrange this to say for example sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus cos squared theta but that means I can replace cos squared theta minus and I'll just replace this sine squared theta with 1 minus 
cos squared theta. And when I do that, I get minus 1. But more interestingly, I, I get minus negative cos squared theta, which becomes plus cos squared theta. So this becomes 2 cos squared theta minus 1. And that is another one of my double angle identities for cosine. And finally, rather than making this substitution, I could have also rewritten this as cos squared theta equals 1 minus sine squared theta. And to do that, I'm going to actually, from here, I'll come down and I get cosine 2 theta equals. Now, I'm going to, in this case, I'm replacing cosine squared. So I'm going to replace this cos squared theta with 1 minus sine squared theta. And then I already had another minus sine squared theta. I didn't really need this green bracket here. I was just trying to be consistent in my substitution. So that 1 just stays the same in front. And I've got minus sine squared theta minus sine squared theta is minus 2 sine squared theta. And that is cosine of 2 theta. And that is our third double angle identity for cosine. So cosine actually has three useful double angle identities. So here's a summary of all of the double angle identities or double angle formulas. So you can see that sine has uh, just a single form. Cosine has three different forms that are useful. And we've got tangent, which just has this single form. For your homework, oh, sorry, we're not ready for homework yet. Before we do homework, we are going to use, use these in an example. So I'm given this piece of information. And I want to know what, it, what are the values. I'm told cos theta equals negative 2 over 3. And I'm told that's for the angle theta between pi and 2 pi. And I want to know values for sine 2 theta and cos 2 theta. Now, the whole point of doing this, and so I'm going to, maybe I should have included this, is do not solve for theta. Okay, the goal of this is not to solve for theta. Um, the idea behind this is to use the obviously the double angle formulas but I guess another way I could have specified that is I could have said exact values only because if I specify exact values for this if I try to solve for theta I'm going to end up with a rounded decimal value so let's keep these in mind and so I'm going to work this example with both of these in mind so the first thing I want to focus on is, well, look at this piece of information, which is essentially this is the domain. I'm saying that the domain of theta is between pi and 2 pi. So between pi and 2 pi would be here is pi and here is 2 pi, and it is in that region. This is cosine and this cosine is negative. So where is cosine negative? Cosine is negative here and here, but between pi and 2 pi, we only have quadrant 3. So that eliminates this one, and it says that, maybe I'll write it a little bit more clearly, so we can conclude that theta is in quadrant 3. So that's what we got from the information that we were provided with here so far. Now there's some other information that we can get out of this, but I want you to, first of all, before I go any further with this, I want you to, um, I want you to see that there's something we can do with this right away. And it depends on which form of these we use. So let's start with sine 2 theta, which is 2 sine theta cos theta. Well, I have cos theta, but I don't know what sine theta is. So I can't do anything more with this just yet. But if I look at my double angle formulas for cosine, we have cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. 
Well, same problem. I know cos theta, but I don't know sine theta. But I could also write that as 2 cos squared theta minus 1, or 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Ideally, you don't want to have to write these out to see it, but I'm trying to make this really clear for you, which is we have cosine and we're missing sine. But that means overall that this form is going to be useful to me because this one only involves cosine. So what I can do is let's go ahead and just take this away and let's continue from here. So that is equal to 2. Now what is cosine of theta? Cosine of theta is negative 2 over 3. So I write that as there's cosine of theta, but this is cos squared theta, so I have to square that negative 2 over 3 minus 1. That's 2 times. Squaring this will give me positive 4 over 9 as the fraction, minus 1. 2 times 4 is 8 over 9. And I might as well give this a common denominator, so that's going to be minus 9 over 9. And I end up with an answer of negative 1 over 9. Cosine of 2 theta is equal to negative 1 over 9. And that's an exact value, of course. Now, how are we going to find sine or sine 2 theta? Well, in order to find sine 2 theta, we need to find sine theta. So in order to do that, just to distinguish, I'm going to come over here, I'll change the color. And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to look at this cosine theta again. But I'm going to remember my definition of cosine. Cosine is defined as x over r. And this is negative 2 over 3. So that means the x coordinate is negative 2. That makes sense. And the y coordinate, sorry, not the y coordinate, the r value is 3. So our triangle would be here with an r value of 3, an x value of negative 2. And of course, we only look down here in quadrant 3. So I, I want you to see now that what I started with when I figured out the quadrants turns out to be useful here because when I look at my y value here, I know that this y value is going to be less than 0, meaning it's going to be a negative value. We've eliminated the positive y option. So that means that x over r, well, that gives me my x value must be equal to negative 2, and my r value must be equal to 3. And I can use the Pythagorean relationship, which is just that x squared plus y squared equals r squared, or y is equal to plus or minus the square root of r squared minus x squared. So y is equal to but I'm just going to go ahead and write this as negative square root r squared, which is 9, minus x squared, which is negative 2 all squared, so that's 9 minus 4. And the reason I did this is because we know that y is less than 0. That's from this condition, from our, from our little uh, cast rule diagram. We know that it's the negative y value, so I can eliminate the positive y value and I end up with 9 minus 4 is 5, so this is the negative root of 5. But now that I know my y value is negative root 5, I also know that sine theta is defined as y over r. So that gives me negative square root 5 over, and I believe r was 3. So now I have an exact value for sine theta. And I can finish this off because now I can say that sine 2 theta is 2 sine theta cos theta, which is 2 times sine theta, which is negative root 5 over 3. And cos theta, which is what we were originally given in the question, is negative 2 over 3. And I multiply these out. I get negative times a negative, so my overall is going to be a positive. 2 times 2 is 4, square root of 5. 3 times 3 is 9. And there is my exact value for sine 2 theta.
And I know I jumped the gun a little bit earlier, but now we're on to the homework. So for your homework, one of the things I would suggest you do is that you attempt to do your own derivation of tan 2x. And just use that definition, that tangent is sine over cos. So tan 2x is the same as sine 2x over cos 2x, and you can, you can work from there. And then you've got some extra assigned problems here, of course. Uh, I'm sure some of which will look like this example that we did. And that is it for this lesson.